So you want to learn how to use AI to create high quality content that readers will love, ranks number one in Google, is compliant with Google spam guidelines, and that you can create in a relatively short period of time. I'm talking 30 minutes or less here. If that's the case, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. So the tool that I personally use and have had the most success with has been Jasper AI. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, try it out for yourself. Jasper offers a free trial and you can score 10,000 free credits by going to clickingpublish.com forward slash Jasper. Alternatively, you can use the link in the description below. So what is high quality content? What makes a blog post considered high quality? Well, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to define high quality content as number one, being original, being unique, grammatically correct, well formatted, properly structured, and publish ready. Now, once you've signed up for Jasper and created your account, you will be directed to your Jasper dashboard. On your dashboard, you will have an overview of all the settings. Right now, we're not gonna focus on anything that is not necessary. I wanna assume that you know nothing about Jasper, nothing about how to use the AI, and that you're just going to say, I bought this program, how do I create a blog post as quickly as possible so that I can start earning money from it? So with that being said, we need to look at the left-hand side where it says documents. Now, if you click on documents, this will bring up a list of all the documents that you've worked on in Jasper. Right now, this is a brand new project. I created a project called Teaching Jasper just to demonstrate everything and show you guys how to use it. So the very first thing that we'll do is just click on new document. And before we click this, I just want to say you can get over here by clicking this little plus icon as well. It will bring you to the exact same page that this is going to bring us when we click on new document. So this right here is the same thing as clicking right here. You notice it doesn't do anything because we're on the same exact page. So if I go back to dashboard and then I click the plus icon, it takes us right back here. Now this page gives you the options on how do you want to set up your document. Like I said, I'm not going to assume you know anything about Jasper. Let's just start with starting from scratch. Workflows and blog starter posts or blog post starter. That's a little bit more advanced, but essentially it's just how to organize your document. If you've been doing this for a while and you have a workflow, you can set that up here. We're not going to bother with that right now. Let's just start from scratch. So now you can see that we have a brand new Jasper document. Now in your Jasper document, you will have two main areas. One is the sidebar. The other is just the main body content. Now from here, the sidebar is going to be one of the most important things. This is where you essentially, you tell Jasper what this content is going to be about, what tone of voice that you want to use. When Jasper outputs content, what output length should Jasper have on there? So for example, if you're going to write an article, let's say the article that we're going to write today is do standing desks need to be plugged in, right? So I would just come in and grab that topic, copy it, paste it like that. This tells Jasper basically what the article is about, okay? Now you have the section for a tone of voice, and this essentially, it basically just gives you the ability to add personality to this post. So for example, you can see, you can make it witty, you can make it serious, you can write in the tone of Joe Rogan. This is basically where you add personality. For me, I always like to put in here, make this content helpful, informative. Uh, so you can just come in here, helpful. If you wanna have any other stuff, you can put a comma and put uh, informative. You can do friendly. I like to keep it down to just two. There might not be anything to that. That's just personal preference. Uh, but the next section you have is keywords. And this is if you want Jasper to kind of hit certain keywords when writing content. I personally don't use it because I don't want Jasper trying to keyword stuff. But at the same time, if you want to use it, you want to try it out, you can. I'm not going to use it in this tutorial, but that's just that. And the last part over here is the output length. So this basically means when Jasper is generating content, do you want him to generate it in small segments, medium segments, or longer segments? So that could be a couple sentences for small, maybe one paragraph for medium. Long form content might be a few paragraphs, like maybe two or three. For me, I usually keep it on medium so that I don't have to stop Jasper. If, like if Jasper is just going on and on 
writing content that I don't want. This just makes it really easy for me to stop Jasper at the same time. Okay, so basically now what we're working on is this article from Do Standing Desks Need to Be Plugged In? All right, so you can basically take it from here with, you can start writing the content yourself. If you know what you want your introduction to be, if you know that you already have an outline, that's great. You can start writing and kind of just have Jasper follow you. What I like to do is I like to create an outline beforehand. So if you look over here, I will drag this over, but I already have basically the outline, the article topic rather, and then I have some points outlined. Now these are just some points that I quickly Googled that I thought, hmm, okay, this might be good to include in an article about standing desk, right? So I don't have to use all these. These are just kind of some points that I wrote down, but it gives me a good outline for things that I want to talk about. And then later on in editing, I can go ahead and make this an H2 or an H3 element and just make it easy to kind of sort that way. First and foremost though, I need an introduction to this article. So I can type this introduction myself, or this is one thing I like to do. I'm gonna come over here and copy this and you'll see power mode. So when signing up for Jasper, you might've noticed that you had something called boss mode or power mode. And basically this is what allows you to use templates. So maybe you have writer's block. Maybe you don't know um, how to start this, this article off, right? So I'm just gonna delete one of my previous ones here and I'll clear the inputs there. All right. And I like to put this up to 15, but I would say that depending upon how many outputs you choose, Jasper charges per words generated. So keep that in mind. If you have a lot of outputs, you'll probably end up paying more, uh, basically just because of that. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna leave it at 15 because I like to have a various amount of options. So I'm gonna paste that title here. So do standing desks need to be plugged in? Okay. So audience, uh, you can, I don't really use that. So I'm gonna leave it blank, but this is basically where you can say, this article is tailored towards homeowners or teenagers or business people, entrepreneurs, you know, Bitcoin holders, marketers, etc. right? Tone of voice, casual, we'll just leave that blank. And I'm just gonna hit generate. Uh, so I wanna clear my previous stuff out, but I'll have to find that setting. But essentially I'm gonna click generate and you'll see that this bin's new content right here is going to be created. All right, there we go. So it just finished generating it. So these are intros that we can use for the article, basically. It gave us 15 results generated just now. You see this highlighted in green. So the white is what was already there before. The green is the new stuff that got generated. So I'm just gonna read a little bit at the top. If you're considering a standing desk for your office, you may be wondering whether or not it needs to be plugged in to work. That sounds like a pretty good um, intro on here. Standing desks come in several different types, including manual, electric. So which one's right for you? Many factors. Yeah, and sometimes what I like to do, I like to basically, I might find parts of one intro that I like and I'll basically paste it over here. Maybe another intro has other things that I think is pretty cool. So I'll paste it over here. Um, and you can kind of basically go from there, you know? So if you found something that you like in here, you can hit that copy to clipboard button. Alternatively, you can also basically click this and have it paste the whole thing to the editor for you. Okay. Now I don't really, unless it's a really good intro, like the whole thing, I usually don't paste the whole thing into the editor. What I like to do is I'm going to undo this. I like the first part. So. You can click it and then you can have the option to highlight just the parts that you want. So I'm going to basically do it that way and just grab it from here. And then I can paste it directly, just the part that I want to have on here. Now, in this video, in this tutorial, I want to show you that you don't have to spend forever trying to write AI content. The whole purpose of AI content is to make this a fast process. So. I'm going to write an article all about do standing desks need to be plugged in. And I'm going to try to write this as quickly as possible just to show you guys this can be done. This is a very, very helpful software that can really speed up your workflow. You can produce articles in minutes, not hours, not days, minutes. Like most articles that I write using Jasper, 20 minutes to 30 minutes max. 
So that being said, I'm going to start this whole process over. Now that we've kind of seen an overview of the elements, like there's tons of templates and stuff that you can choose from, but I want to assume you don't want to fool with any of this. So my workflow usually is just to come over here. This is what I want to work with. So this is my article here. So right now we have a blank slate and I'm going to show you how to go about using Jasper. One thing that I will mention, you can click on here to compose and that will have Jasper start generating content and sentences, or you can use keyboard shortcuts, which is quicker. And you can say control J and Jasper will start outputting content based upon the output length that you have specified over here. So as I showed you before, Here's what we're going to be basically writing about. Do standing desks need to be plugged in? And these are some of the headlines and sections of the article. So let's get started. Now I'm going to put a timer on the screen and try to write this as quickly as possible. I got rid of the intro that we did before, so I can just show you the process from start to finish right now. So I'm going to go over here to power mode and we're going to go for the template for blog post intro paragraph. So I'm going to look through these really quickly. If you're considering a standing desk for your office, you may be wondering whether or not it needs to be plugged in to work. I want just that first part on here. So I'm going to copy that over, backspace that out. I'll come back over here to focus mode. And I'll say not every standing desk is control J. All right, boom, not every standing desk is the same. And the answer to this question depends largely on what type of desk you're using. So this is kind of elaborating more, which is good. I'm gonna just backspace this off right now. If you're considering extending this for your office, you may be wondering whether or not, let's see what Grammarly suggests. If you're considering extending this for your office, you may wonder whether it needs to be plugged. I like this is clean and simple. So yeah, it's suggesting into not the right use case, so I'll hit dismiss. Largely on, I think that's good. So now it's grammatically correct. Put a comma there, looking good. All right. Does your standing desk need to be plugged? I hit control J, let Jasper finish. Plugged, yeah, there we go, plugged in. So I already know the answer to this because it really depends on the type of standing desk that you have. So I can just say, depending upon the type standing, and I'll hit control J, let Jasper write the rest of that. Okay, if you have an adjustable desk height with a hand crank, there's no electrical components. Therefore, you don't need to plug it in. However, if your standing desk has electric motors that allow you to change the height of the desk with the button on its surface or via, a control panel, then it will need to be plugged in to work. That is a direct answer. So we have the answer. We've delivered the answer directly to the reader. I'm just going to bold it right now. All right. It's a little lengthy, but we can always clean that up if we want later. So I can just come right here and say in this blog post, control J. I like that. I like that. So this is the intro. This is the final paragraph to kind of segue you into why you need to keep reading. So we got the introduction done already. Let's see. I like to change the height. So we can just kind of rearrange that. Now we're at 207 words. So I'm going to come over to my document here so I can say, all right, what section do we need? What are the types of standing desk? So I can come here and start off. What are the Types of standing disk. Probably make that camel case. Yeah, there we go. And one thing that I, I personally like to use just to kind of make things easier for titles is there's a website called Capitalize My Title. So you can just actually make it really simple. Paste it in there. Everything's capitalized by title case. So now Paste that, looks good. Let's make it an H2. So what are the types of standing desk? So I can say when it comes to standing desk, control J, you have two main options, manual and electric. Manual standing desks are adjusted by hand, crank, 
while electric standing desks are used and electric motor to adjust the desk height. Manual standing desks are generally more affordable. Let's keep going. They also require no plugging in, making them a great choice for those who don't have access to electric outlet. However, manual standing desks can be more tiring and time consuming to adjust. That is accurate. Electric standing desks are more expensive than manual ones, but they offer the convenience of being able to quickly and easily adjust the desk height. What else you got, Jasper? With a button or control panel. They usually come with additional features such as memory settings, which allow you to save the height of your desk. However, electric standing desks need to be plugged in to work and may require professional installation. So I know mine didn't require professional installation. I, I did it myself. Some, some people might want that though. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, I don't like really lengthy paragraphs either, like big chunks of it. Still they offer, yeah, that looks good. And they don't need to be plugged into work. They need to be plugged in to raise and lower the desk. So technically that's somewhat true. Um, I think we probably need to elaborate a little bit more. So I'll say, however, the standing desk uh, needs to be plugged in in order to raise or... Now Jasper's gonna guess, I'm gonna say lower the desk. I know he is. Yeah, there we go. Additionally, electric standing desks tend to be heavier than manual ones and may require... Ah, see? That's accurate. So it mentioned that the the uh, the weight of the desk might require someone to have a professional installation, which is technically true. I like that. Now, this is a headline that Jarvis or Jasper suggested on his own. So how do I select the standing desk that works for me? I'm not sure if that matches uh, one of our headings, but you know what? It's still a good topic, you know? So I'm going to make this an H2. All right, so when, a standing, when selecting a standing desk, it's important to decide whether you want manual or electric. Or want a man, okay, yeah. Okay, consider your needs and budget before making a decision. Let's see what else you got, Jasper. If you're on a budget and don't plan to use your desk often, then a manual desk may be the best choice. It's generally more affordable, it does not need to be plugged in. However, if you plan to frequently adjust your desk height, this sounds accurate to me because I did a lot of research when getting my standing desk. Okay, once you decide, and actually, just kind of a funny point. My standing desk is a Jarvis, the company Jarvis desk. And Jasper used to be named Jarvis back in the day. So just a, a fun little uh, tidbit. So once you've decided which type of desk is right for you, make sure to measure the space in your office. Additionally, consider how much weight you plan to put on the desk. Some desks have weight limits and may not be able to hinder, uh, handle heavier items. Finally, be sure to check that the desk if the desk needs to be plugged in and whether you have access to a nearby electrical outlet. Okay, so now you can kind of see Jasper's trying to wrap up the post. If I hit Control J again, it's like, okay, yeah, we helped you, we're done. Sorry, Jasper, I'm not done with you yet. This is a good section though, I like it. We're at 600 words. So we covered already, what are the types of standing desks? So if we go back to our document, we did this one. Is an electrical or manual standing desk better? So that might actually, yeah, we should, we should use that. Let me copy that. I don't know why it's not letting me highlight it, but in any case, I can come in and say, is an electrical or manual standing desk better? All right, automatically capitalized it for me. So now I'm gonna drop down here, paste that in, make that an H2. And you don't have to make everyone an H2 because you're probably gonna go back and change this during editing, but it's just a good way to let Jasper know we're separating this article out into sections. So is an electrical or manual standing desk better? Um, maybe depending on your needs, control J and budget, either a manual or electric standing desk can be the right choice for you. Manual desks are typically more affordable, easier to move around, but require more effort. I kind of feel like this is what we talked about. Uh, how to select. Yeah, so we might not really need to cover this because we kind of covered this here. And that's not a fault of Jasper at all. That's just me putting the same headline in there. Um, let's see, how does a electric standing desk work? So now we'll go back into some details of how this actually works. So I can start off saying electric standing desk 
natural day. Okay, that looks good. Have Grammarly fix it on here. Yeah, there we go. Or. All right, so electric standing desk, use an electric motor to adjust the desk height. When you press a button on the desk or use the control panel, the electric motor moves a gear in the system that raises or lowers the desk. I know that's accurate. Most electric standing desks have additional features such as memory settings, true, which allow you to save different heights or different tasks and quickly switch between them with the press of a button. This can be useful if you frequently switch between sitting and standing throughout the day. Overall, electric standing desks offer convenience and ease of use, but require an electrical outlet to work properly. Make sure you have access to nearby outlets. Nice. Okay, I like that. By considering your needs and budget, selecting the right type of standing desk for you, and making sure that you have access to electricity is necessary. Okay. Uh, we don't really need to talk about budget again. We're just this section is about how they work. So I think we're good on that. Should I let's see, let's see what else we have over here. How do you manage cables? Um, not really. I added this one on the list, but it's not really that relevant to the original question of do standing desks need to be plugged in? So I probably won't include that on there just to keep the topic relevant. Uh, how much power does a standing desk consume? That's a good one. So how much power does a standing desk consume? All right, let's hop back over here, paste it. Now I'm gonna tell you up front, I don't know the answer to this question. It's, I know that the answer means it's gonna vary by the desk that you get in the company, basically, but it's something I wanna actually look into in Google. So if we just make this an H2. All right, so I'll say on average, most standing desk. Control J. We'll use around 140 watts of power. It's a comma, yeah. Uh, this is equivalent to about 1.2 kilowatt hours of energy per day, which translates on average to a cost of approximately 0 0.12 cents a day, or less than five dollars per month. All right. Overall, uh, they're not expensive to run. So before I tell Jasper to start writing more content on here. I need to actually see if what Jasper's saying is correct. So I'm going to, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this right now. And I'm going to hop over here to Google and type in the same question. So let's actually fact check this. First result is this website here. Keep calm, go electric. 10 things you might know. So these, these search results really aren't telling you exactly like how much the average standing does use. Let's see what this first result says. Let's see what the first result says. What components does an electric desk need to lift? Nope, 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 not what we're asking. Ah, okay, so this is probably more so. How much energy does an electric desk lift use? So contrary to popular belief, it won't drain their electricity. Most height adjustable desks only use 150 watts when active use and merely 0 0.2 in standby mode. So does that match what we have? 140 watts when in use. This website says 150 watts when in use and 0 0.2 in standby. Jasper says, Jasper doesn't mention the standby. so. We can probably mention the standby. I don't want to just be like, okay, that site said it, so let's do it. Let's see if we can find any other people or websites that can cooperate that. Electric mail, height adjustable, standing. Mm. Standing desk power consumption, maybe that one. Is this a different website than this one? Yes, yeah, different website. All right, keep calm, go electric, confronting your most common fears. All right, not at all, the energy consumption. Okay, uplift desk uses 200 watts and that's only when it's using its height adjustable capabilities. On standby, 0.2. So they're saying 0.2. The other guy is saying 
Uh, 150 watts. I think Jasper said 140 watts. So I think an accurate answer, I should probably do a little bit more digging. Let's look at one more site. So far we have Jasper at 140, we have the other side at 150, another one is at 200. So let's see which does this talk about power usage. Electric does leave on anyways. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, draw power. Give me some data. Vampire power on top. I don't see them actually mentioning the how much it pulls. No. Okay, yeah, I don't really see that right now. Let's see if that site mentions it. Power consumption. One to two watts. So I think it's safe to say, and you can do your research a bit more, but when you don't, don't really have a exact number, you can always give a range here. So on average, most ending desks will use around, we'll go from 140 to 200 watts of power. Okay, so that is still accurate, you know? It's giving accurate information. We're not really being as specific because I don't really think we can be more specific on that just because every desk is gonna be different. Um, so, so every manufacturer is gonna be a little bit different. So that's equivalent to that, which translates to an average cost of that per day. All right. Overall, electric desks are not very expensive to run or usually more convenient than manual ones. Let's see what else Jasper writes. Consider your needs, lifestyle, and budget before deciding on which is right for you. I like it. Let's go with that. All right. And I'll look into the math to see about the actual cents per days or less than that, but we can always come back to that before we actually click publish on the article. All right, so what else we got? Can you plug a standing desk into a surge protector? That might be a good one. So let's add that in here. And I, I might do another video just kind of showing because Right now I'm explaining things and it's taking longer to kind of talk it out, but this is still pretty quick. Yeah. You know? All right. Can you plug a stunning desk into a surge protector? I'll start it off with surge protectors, control J. I, I love how quickly it's just, it's just like it knows this information. All right, surge protectors are a great way to protect your standing desk from power surges and other electrical issues. Most electrical standing desks have an internal safety switch that can shut off the power if there is an overload or surge. However, plugging the desk into a surge protector can provide additional protection. Control J, let's see what else you got, Jasper. When plugging in your standing desk, make sure to use a surge protector that's rated for the amount of power your desk will draw. That is a good point. Also make sure to plug your desk directly into the wall outlet and not into an extension cord or other device. Great advice. Overall, it's recommended to plug your electrical standing desk into a surge protector for added protection against power surges and electrical issues. However, make sure to use the right type and ensure it's plugged directly into the wall outlet. Now, we're not finishing this article, Jasper. I don't care how much you want me to. I'm going back to my document. What happens if a standing desk loses power? Well, let's see. Put that in here. Copy. And as you can see, it's gonna be much easier and quicker to write content when you already know something about the subject. When you don't, you know, Google it, make some phone calls, do some original research. Either way, like Jasper's gonna help you write stuff really quickly. Um, what happens when standing desks lose power? Um, I'll say power outages can, control J. If the power goes out, your desk will stop functioning and you will not be able to adjust the height. This is 100% true. This is something you need to watch for. Um, some electric standing desks are equipped with a battery backup system. That is true. If this is something you... Okay, overall power outages can be a nuisance when using an electric standing desk, but there are ways to keep it running 
during an outage, consider pressing a desk. Ah, see now, it's kind of getting a little bit repetitive because really I didn't give it any information. So it's kind of just going off of what it already basically knew. So I'm gonna take that part off. And I'm gonna Google this now, just to see. I know what Jasper said was right, but I wanna see if we can get some more information. So let's go for here. Desk will temporarily unplug. Let's see here, products. So this is the desk getting stuck. How to resolve when you're standing it stops working. Standing desk power outage. And you even have Reddit here. You have Reddit. Good old Reddit. Now, I'm not saying this is the authoritative source for answers, but it can also be a good a good uh, place to get some feedback, to get some opinions. You know, you might have some opinion pieces that you write, or surveys even. So Reddit's always good. All right. Desktop's working. Reset mode. So you can even go into, like, putting a desk in reset mode. Each motor is an encoder and sensing device converting motion to electrical signal. Okay, so I'm gonna hop back into Jasper because I know what Jasper said is true because just owning one. Um, if your standing desk happens to control J. Mm, that's a good point, unplug the desk you may need to reset the desk once the power has been restored, as some desks can become confused if they lose power while in use. Overall, it's important to be prepared for any potential power outages when using an electrical standing desk and have a plan in place to ensure your productivity is not disrupted. Considering investing in a battery backup system or it's going to say uninterrupted power supply. I know it. Oh, nope. Never mind. I'm plugging your desk. This will help you ensure that you can stay productive no matter what. I like that. I like that. Everything's accurate. All right. Can you replace the motor? I guess that's a good segue from the power going out. Can you replace the motor? Um, so how should I start this out? Sometimes I just want, I want to see what Jasper says. Ah, okay. Sometimes the motors and standing desk can become worn or even break over time due to regular use. If that happens, you may need to replace the motor on your desk in order to keep it functioning. Most standing desks are equipped with a standard AC motor that is easy to replace. Depending on the model of your desk, you may be able to purchase a replacement motor online at your local hardware store. I don't, yeah, mm, I wouldn't say your local hardware store. I would say probably reach out to the manufacturer. I don't think I can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and fix this baby over here. <laughs> so, um, depending upon the model of your desk, you may, I'll say you may need to reach out to the manufacturer, yeah, for replacement parts. If you're comfortable with the technical side of things, it's possible to replace the motor yourself. That's true. However, replacing an electrical sending desk motor can be tricky, true, and should only be done by experienced professionals or those with proper training. If your desk is still under warranty, it's recommended to uh, contact the manufacturer first before attempting any repairs. This may be able to help you replace the motor or provide instructions on how to do it yourself. I like that. All right. So that is a good section here. Guys, look, we're already at 1500 words, basically. Um, so we did that one. We did that one. We did search protector. How much power does it consume? We did that. Are all standing desks electric? I don't really think that that uh, warrants a section because we basically covered. There's two types of desks already: manual and electric. Uh, should I unplug my standing desk? That might be. Copy that. Should I unplug my standing desk? Uh, let's come over here. What happens when it loses power? We'll just put it right here. And this is not like the perfect article, guys, but it is a way to produce an article and then you can go in editing. If you need to mix up sections or have different headings for that, that's done in editing. Right now, we're just writing an article, getting it done quickly, 
we know that it's well researched. We know that it's, it's factually accurate. We're killing it right now. So, should I unplug my standing desk? Unplugging, if I can spell that right. Unplugging, Control J. It's good practice as it will help protect your desk from power surges. Now, I'm not sure if that's the case. I could totally be wrong. I could totally be right. I, I, I just don't know. So I'm gonna Google that. Um, it's also important to unplug the desk if you expect a power outage. I would say that's probably true because you don't want your search to basically kill your desk. Uh, this will help ensure that your desk does not become a danger due to, um, I'd say more so due to power surges. Control J. Mm, there we go. Spell it right. In addition, unplugging your desk can help save energy. Ah, that's true. Most electric standing desks use around... Ah, see? This is where Jasper remembered what we wrote up here at the... Yeah. So Jasper remembered this right here and basically quoted that figure that we gave it. Which translates to that. Unplugging the desk when it is... What were you going to say? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm just going to Google. I'm going to Google to see, should I unplug my standing desk? Because I don't know. That's a good question. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to say, should I unplug my standing desk? You can leave your desk plugged in all the time and it will use much less energy. Okay, so let's Reddit. See the do's and don'ts. And one thing that you can do too is reach out to like standing desk manufacturers like Jarvis, uh, Uplift. You can actually just get that data directly from them. I see, do ease into the alternate, do move around, don't sit, don't overload it. I'm not gonna lie, I, I leave my casters unlocked, so whatever. I do declutter. What was our question? I forgot what we were doing. Oh, should I unplug? All right, should I, do they mention unplugging? Unplug. Yeah, I don't see anything about unplugging here, so. Let's go back. Yeah, I think based upon this question, I'm just gonna come back over here. But based upon this question, unplugging the desk every day or often, the only thing I can think of that would really cause it to have an issue is maybe like wear and tear on your wall socket or like the cord or something like that. But beyond that, I think we're good to say like, um, we're gonna plug. so that's true, that's true. I mean, I guess this is technically true. This is not false information. We might want to elaborate a little bit more, but beyond that, this is all technically true. I will say, uh, unplugging and plugging your standing desk back in a while. The save on power. Keep in mind the wear and tear this and cause on the plug and cable over time. Mmm, I like that. Okay, so there we go. Space the paragraph out a little bit. Overall, it's recommended. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good. I mean, Probably don't need this part. That's a little bit repetitive, but I think we're good. So now we're up to 1600 words, guys. We're almost at 2000. What else is in this document? We did, how does it work? We're skipping the cable management. Can I, can I get a standing desk without a motor? Uh, that's kind of a manual, just a manual desk, I guess, but. You know, we wanna be thorough. So I'm gonna come up here where we talked about uh, how do I select a desk that works for me? Let me come in and put it at this part. And the point is, like, once you get your article written, you can rearrange the sections however you want them. 
but we're just actually getting the content, making sure the content's accurate, making sure it's right, making sure it's helpful content. And let's come over here. Can I get a standing desk without a motor? Standing desk without motors. Very popular. These desks are manually adjustable and don't require any electrical components, meaning they don't need to be plugged in. Manual standing desks can be great options for those on a budget who have limited access to an electrical outlet. They also tend to be lighter than electric standing desk, making them easier to move around. What else you got? However, manual standing desks can be more tiring and time consuming to adjust. Okay, so don't write the conclusion in the middle of the, uh, the article, Jasper. Additionally, they don't offer the convenience of memory settings, other features that standing desks have. There are, let's see what they get. All right. So let's answer the question. Can you get a standing desk without a motor? Yes. So basically, I guess, I mean, really, this does answer the question already. Yeah, let's just leave that right now and we can come back to it if we want to later on. Uh, lastly, will they work if they're not plugged in? Did we cover that? Yeah, we didn't cover that one, which is kind of obvious, I would think, but never assume you know what the reader thinks they know or wants to know. All right, I think this kind of covers it now. So what I just copy, will setting desk work if they're not plugged in? Let's do the, let's come down to the power one. I think this is a good spot to have it. So we'll make that H2. Okay, and we can say win A, just see what Jasper does. I'll delete that. I'll just say it will still technically there we go. Manually uh, manual standing desks use a lever or crank system that does not rely on electricity. So these types of desks will still work when not plugged in. However, it may be more difficult to adjust. However, manual standing desks are still able to function. Now, the only thing I don't really, I think this is good. I think this is passable for sure. But by asking the question, will standing desks work if they aren't plugged in? This automatically implies that you have an electric standing desk. So I don't know if I want Jasper going on about manual ones. Manual standing desk using a lever or crank system. They're unable to do this. I might can just take this part out. Overall, electric standing desks need to be plugged in for them to work correctly. However, manual standing desks are still able to function without being plugged in and can be used as regular fixed height desks. When selecting a standing desk, Consider your needs and whether or not you need an electric motor for height adjustments. I think this is good. I think that is good because it, it still mentions the manual desk, but it does it in a classy way that matches what the article is about. Okay. I don't like thick paragraphs, so I'm just gonna break it up to be a little bit more form fitting. Uh, and now let's write the conclusion. Like guys, we're, we're done with this article. I'm pretty sure it's gonna come to 2000 words, 10 minute reading. You don't have to write articles as long as this one. Um, wrapping it up. And see, Jasper's gonna know I'm, I'm writing the conclusion now. With that being said, electric standing desk need to be plugged in. Now, I don't like this conclusion because I think it's taking from part of do they need to be plugged in instead of like the whole article. Uh, so it might be, now this is a good example. It might be that you just need to write conclusion. Sometimes you want to have a fancy a subheading for the ending, but that might mean Jasper might not understand that 
this is the conclusion to the article. So what you can always do is write conclusion, have Jasper write out an appropriate conclusion, then just go back and change the H2 title. So control J. So I, I'll just take this part off. I don't need to ask the question over again. Standing desks generally need to be plugged in for them to work correctly. Manual standing desks can still be used as regular fixed desks without being plugged in, but electric standing desks will not move up and down unless it's power. So do standing desks need to be plugged in? So yes, they need to be plugged in and work correctly. Um, maybe you can always use a manual standing desk for fixed height without needing electricity. Unplugging your standing desk when it's not in use is recommended as this can help protect your device from power surges and reduce energy costs. Uh, let's see, I want a different last paragraph. Control J, oops. Yeah, I don't, I don't need you to say that much. So I think that recaps it pretty well. Maybe you should always, you should always. I think that's a good ending. Like now I can change this to wrapping it up. Boom. All right. We have the finished article guys. So that took me about 40 minutes to write, but mainly just because I kind of went overboard, talked it out, explained some things. Realistically, your articles aren't always going to come to 2000 words. Okay. So I've written articles in about eight minutes before that are about close to a thousand words, sometimes over a thousand words. It really just depends on the topic. This was a pretty in-depth article about standing desk and whether or not they need to be plugged in. Not all articles are going to be that you know, in depth, they might not take that much. You kind of determine whether or not an article is going to be longer, not based upon trying to, trying to hit a word count, but more so based upon, does this topic need this amount of thoroughness? You know, if you're saying, how do you cut an apple versus how do you choose a puppy? You know, cutting an apple, that might be 500 words at best versus choosing your first like puppy. You got to do a lot of research. That's going to take way more writing. Even if you're using Jasper, it's going to speed things up dramatically, but you still have to put more into it. But that is the best way to create articles that are high quality. Everything in this article was basically fact checked. A little bit fuzzy on the uh, mathematics when it comes to <laughs> translating this into how much per month. You can always go and clean that up, though. You create like you have an entire article now that is fact checked. Only part you want to probably check on. Everything else, accurate. Go in, add your pictures, add your photos, add your videos, add your internal links. Make sure that you're linking to other articles on your website. These are the things that are going to move the needle for you. So there we have it. One really important thing that I wanted to mention is that this is my personal experience, guys. I'm not telling you to use AI on your websites, your main websites, brand new websites. You can totally write content the old way. It's a bit slower, yeah, but you know, it still works. It's still content. However, using Jasper, using basically AI has really made a major impact in my business and has really sped up the time that it takes to generate a nice income. So that is just a little disclaimer there. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. For me personally, it has worked really well and has allowed me to produce a good income. So. If you're on the fence about it, start a brand new website. You don't have to put this AI content on your main websites that you already, like if you already have a established website and you're a little bit on the fence on if you should use AI content or not, that is totally fine. Experiment, start a brand new website. With the brand new website, write the AI content the way that I showed you in the video. See what happens. Watch it rank in Google, watch the income roll in. Okay, like there's no reason to hold back from it. Just imagine if you wrote two to three articles per day. It took me about 30 minutes to write this content. It would have been a little bit quicker if I hadn't been trying to explain different things. But imagine 30 minutes for one well-written article. Now, imagine if you took 
a couple hours out of your day every day. You could produce around three or four articles or more using AI content. So that is just my little two cents on there. But I think it has really revolutionized things and it's just going to get even better as time goes on. One thing that I do want to point out is that if you are on the fence about whether or not to use AI content, start a brand new website. Experimentation is going to be one of the best skills that you can have because in the ever changing world of blogging, there are going to be new tools. There are going to be new ways of doing things. Google is constantly changing. Start a brand new website, create AI content on there. The way I showed you in the video though, like don't just click compose and expect Jasper to spit out a super high quality article that that's not going to happen. Start a new site, create the content the way that I showed you. Watch the income come in, watch the traffic for the website skyrocket. Now, I'm not saying it will definitely happen in every niche. Like a lot more goes into it besides just producing content. There are no guarantees and results may vary. You got to actually be writing content that people are searching for. Now, that's a whole other video in itself. And if you want to see me go into more detail about that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like and check out the next video coming up where I talk about how I was able to start a brand new website from scratch using AI that generated me $852 in one month passively after 10 months of starting the site. So if that is something that you're interested in seeing and hearing about, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you subscribe, never stop clicking publish and stay tuned for the next video.